As Morgan said, Parul is my institute. It's my family. I was privileged to, what you say, inaugurate PIAR with Mr. Yashwan Mistri. And this is my fourth session here. I love being with you all for two good reasons. Number one, I like the way you all take my pictures. Thank you for that. <laughs> And I love the humbleness of your principal, friendliness of your teachers. Being memorable is nothing but it's about life, about architecture, about travel, about your absorption from what you have been seeing, about history of India, about culture of India. Chagade 
is awakened. So it's called awakening from within. The purpose of showing this video to the students of architecture, mainly those who live in Barbaria and directly connected to Varadara. And to my friends, our guests, to this wonderful nation, they have been living in Varadara since so many days. I'm sure all of you must have been to Lakshmi Vilas Palace. The first image, what you saw when the starting of uh, the video was Lakshmi Vilas Palace. The relevance here is around two centuries back, India gave birth to a great artist called Raja Ravi Verma. History of India is in a way not known to many people around the world. The king of Vadodara, Maharaja Sayaji Rao III, soon after he built the palace, Lakshmi Vilas Palace, he heard about Raja Ravi Verma from south of India. He was invited to Vadodara. Raja lived in Vadodara for so many years. And my dear friends, the history of India is worn around his living his life. The image of Ma Saraswati you see here, right here. How do we know how does our devis and devta look like? It's nothing but the vision of a man, an artist, a creator called Ravi Verma. And this video is before his life when Sayaji Rao Gaikwar invited him to Vadodara and said, Look, Mr. Verma, why can't Indian art be displayed into galleries of the world? Why can't Indian art, the culture, cannot be displayed around the galleries of Europe? That was the vision of the king of this day. Ravi Verma said, I cannot start drawing so suddenly. I need to know this work. I need to move around. And this was the video. He started moving around. And while he was wandering around, he found out one day his own awakening. And that's called Anahad. He was moving around like Mahatma Gandhi all around India, mainly in certain part of Rajasthan as you have seen Jaisalmer. And one fine day he realized he sent a telegram to the king, yes, I am ready to paint. His work has given two great things to India. Hindi cinema, or let's say cinema, not Hindi cinema, cinema as a whole in India is nothing but Raja Ravi He was on the bank of bankruptcy. He gave away all his paintings to one of his disciples whose name is Dada Farke. You know that? The highest level of Hindi, an uh, Indian film award is named after Dada Farke. And Dada Falke was nobody but Raja Ravi Verma's disciple. He was a maverick. He took that risk. His aim was, the only aim was art, nothing but art. He gave away his wealth to his disciple and he built a film studio. Because Ravi Verma was obsessed by films. He wanted that we want to do Films. We should make up, establish a film studio in this nation. And that's how Hindi cinema was built. That's one relevance. Another, as I said, before two centuries, this nation were only worshipping stones out of anywhere, the temples. As you know, Hindu temples, Indian temples, never have a picture. We all have idols. 
So how do we know how Rama is? How do we know Krishna is? How do we know Lakshmi is? How do we know Saraswati is? All this is nothing but manifestation of Raja Ravi. He brought to the world that, okay, if it is Lakshmi Ji, this is her tenderness, this is her well uh, operating mom, um, uh, notion. So maybe this is how our Lord Lakshmi looks. He started printing it against the wheel of many people. He revolted. And those print now, today, not only at the uh, even the richest and the poor have round the world. So while you all are living, studying, learning in Varudra, I must say, you should connect yourself to this one gentleman called Raja Ravi Varma. Go to Lakshmi Vila's palace again and again. Try to find out. He serves. You will learn a lot. We all will learn a lot. My today's presentation is based on many such mavericks. And why I am so proud of it? Because I am always proud of Lakshmi Vila's palace. One fine holidays, I was in Monaco. As we all know, it's the wealthiest nation in the world. Fifteen thousand dollars GDP is the highest GDP in the world. Can you imagine fifteen thousand dollars GDP? And it's a monarchy. Their king lives in this palace and see Lakshmi Vela's palace. India might be known as a developing nation or an emerging nation, but the wealth we have, the richness we have in the culture, in the history, in the art, is unsurmountable. I have been moving around the world like Raja or many other people. While my tourist guy took us and he was proudly telling not to lower down any other monarchy or any other nation's uh, work of architecture. But honestly, my dear friend, I started laughing. I say our kings have struggles to put their camels and horse in such kind of a palace. Compare Lakshmi's palace and the highest GDP owing nation's palace. This is the difference between India and the rest of the world. As I said, traveling is very important. In search of your own existence. The other day, I was trying to find out, I was trying to understand. Don't we all architects are like, we are always trying to hack us. Architects are hackers. Hackers in many ways. We hack ideas, we hack stories, we hack cultures, we hack some part of architecture, whether it is Frank or I here. This gentleman was a gay American. When his client told him to design something in this falling forest and barren, in ordinary case, somebody will put a building wherein from the building you can see the water. FLW put the building upon the water. And now today it is America's historical place, tourist destination place. It's not because it belonged to a wealthy, now it belongs to the government of US. This is because of somebody's ideas, of the thought process, the creator, how he thinks about it. Or let's say talk about Millennium Bridge in the United Kingdom. When Sir Norman Foster was asked to build a bridge to commemorate the end of this millennium, from the famous St. Paul Cathedral, He designed a bridge which this planet has never thought of. It had its problem, 
it was cracking, but they overcome with scientific calculations. This is a pedestrian bridge where you can see so many people. People here go not to commute, maybe, to see the bridge, to enjoy the bridge. Or maybe John Woodson's Opera House. It is said, this building is the most photographed building in the world. Any moment, if you see it, there are flashes going on to capture the images of this beautiful building. John Woodson <coughs> was a man, right? He came from Denmark. He left this project halfway through. He never returned back to Australia. He has never seen his own creation. Then, now, in 2010, Australian citizens and the people realize we have been rude to a great human being, a great actor. They have appointed John Hudson's son to redesign the interiors of Opera House. And a room was given on the name of John Hudson Hall. Because the interiors of this magnificent, very sensitive building, very apt to the context of Sydney Harbour, the interior was not done by John Hudson. The then Public Works Department of Sydney has revolted against him and he was forced to leave Australia. And now, after so many years, they realize we can give him his dignified look the way he puts and wants. And why we talk about the modern, recent time architecture? How can we forget Antonio Gaudi? We all know Sagrada Familia in Barcelona is still under construction since 140 years. It's the only building on this planet which is under construction since 140 years. Gaudi died on back. This part of the facade, the entrance, one of the entrance to Sagrada Familia, he did maybe a century back. <coughs> Just look into it. We talk about deconstructivism, we talk about postmodernism. I think he was aware of all this 100 years back, and we never noticed it. We start talking recently in the world, when Peter Isaac man did the Western century. <coughs> look at the quality and ability of human expression. It's nothing but the display of my Sagrada family is nothing but a poem of Bible in stone. The respect Barcelona gave him is he was buried into this. Yet it is not open for worship. Only last to last year, Pop went there for the first time, or the first pop took a visit of Sagrada Gaudi was a memory. And we talk about this building. It changed the whole course of history. It changed the topography of one city. It changed the economy of a little town like where I live, Anand, into a tourist hub. This is Frank Gehry's Dagenham Museum, Bilbao, Spain. Why? Because the way he works, the way he brings down his own buildings, it's above the human thought level. And whenever I talk to my students, before I talk about my work, honestly, I'm still learning. I'm still learning from the great masters. 
I am still learning from what I see. This video on Anhadan Nag Jagade was taken out with great difficulty from the recently released film called Rangarasiya. It was released this year and as we know it's very difficult to bring that out. I with few other has got the video out because it was very apt for this presentation. So Frank Gary, we all know or rather, we, if we don't know, we should study him. We should see his videos, the way he works. The last exercise, the last jury, I was here with my son Kubel, was one of the most memorable experience to me. The way you guys are working upon is fantastic. You have great faculty. But what happens as we mature? as we transcend from third to fifth year and from fifth year to the masters and from masters to outside world. We should not let our spirit die. World is big, lot of opportunities, lot of things to work. IMPA has again a different set of thinking. When Napoleon Bonaparte's palace was converted into Louvre Museum Paris, an international competition was held to design a new Louvre. IMPA came out with a new idea, and this is Louvre. He went up to the exchange with the support of the President of France, Mr. Mitra, people of Paris revolted that what an ugly glass box. I am in between great Baroque architecture of where Napoleon Bonaparte lived. And the President and P. being maverick together, they Overruled it and today Paris loses. In fact, Paris has two similar history. When Eiffel Tower was built by Eiffel, people of Paris were almost on the streets to bring it down. They considered it as an ugly metal structure. And today we all know. When we talk about France, the first thing, the first image comes to our mind is nothing but Eiffel Tower. Like we, when we talk about India, the first thing comes to our mind is Armal. The first thing comes to our mind when we talk about Australia is Opera House. So that was Eiffel Tower. And parallel to it is now the Louvre by Andre. These were few moments of celebration moving around the world, learning and learning for a search to make yourself more efficient, to make out a change in what you yourself have been doing last year or maybe in the last project. Come back to my home country, my hometown. Next project, start evaluating, start. Like that hacker, maybe, maybe. That sense, the spirit we, we borrow while we travel around the world comes with you. And we try to give something better to the architecture we create next for our own nation. But we have to understand and we have to remain conscious always that architecture is not glam. Never ever it's a glam. It's the art we live in. The physical world brings us a sudden impact on us. It portrays how we live, 
how we want to study, for example, if it's an institute, it's nothing but a portrait of human life. While you are traveling, while you are working, all things is intended. It goes up and down, up and down. One step forward, one step back. There is no chapters in life. While on the one side you travel, while on the one side you watch movies, movie watching for me is also an experience of art. Like one of my staff members, Chetna Sharma, is here on the front sofa. When they came out with a recent film called Roy, many of us never understood what is Roy. <laughs> my wife said, never bring me to such kind of a picture. To me, it's an outstanding work of creation. How a creative person thinks and how he puts his own story. In a way, we all, as an architect also are telling stories in different ways. So while I am with my students anywhere, whether I am at PIR, SMID or APID, or in my studio. We try to experiment different things. Try to learn like so many installations, so many words. What forms, designs, the quality of light emerges out of what kind of a material. And being blessed to live in such a naturally abundant place. Even a seed like this is important to me. This helps us to find out a new form. Three leaves, the tentacles around, the shadow it casts. The leaflets which have been circulated to you before the presentation, some of them are work advanced work of architecture at A School of Architecture London. Those exercises are been circulated because from this initial learning, from such kind of institute, needs to be taken many folds ahead. And there are few catalogs of our own projects. What we do in our office is, once the projects are over, we evaluate it. We put a design statement. So there are few booklets here where our own project design statements are. Because everything cannot be clubbed in a presentation and I never want to bore my audience. Learning, traveling, we try to bring out such kind of a monumental forms. This was the entrance, proposed entrance gateway to the main capital of India. It's a milk revolution and we wanted to portray a structure which is revolutionary. It is yet to be. Or maybe the bottle palm we use around me teaches us every day. Not only it forms, it's geometry. How things radiate, how it is put together. All the slides before this, whether it is Sagrada Familia and Bay, Opera House or Norman Foster, Millennium Bridge, whatever you see. All this came into functioning, into limelight, into the notice of the world because of that city like this. Nature teaches us a lot and I'm glad you have been doing this through your exercise. But that is not the one. Don't just take it as a submission. Go beyond it. 
exercise given in the classroom is just a hint. You have to continue until you, oh, in a way, what you can say, you get something out of it. Don't treat it as an exercise. Mark, submission, put it off and done. So maybe this learning allows us to bring out such a beautiful form. When we take pictures, it becomes very easy to understand. We love it, we like it, okay, it's good. But this small bell ring allows us to think how it is constructed. It's an arch or an exposed brickwork. Whether you start from the top or you start from the bottom, it's a question. If you start from the bottom, your brick course, when you reach the top, won't collide with the curve of it. Or if you start from the top, how do you raise the bricks? So, we found out the new way of doing it. We casted the slab first and we plumb it down on the ground. The RCC column in between were obviously there. Then the brick work started. This was before we all started using CAD and elaborate software in India. It's an old building. Unfortunately, it is no more. With the rational thinking of builders, it is taken off and now a multi-story exists there. So that's a rare slide we have. Or maybe such kind of a intermingling of two various forms. It's a separate building. Don't take it as the same building. It's a separate building. But here the form, the way it crosses the curve in a very compact small space. It gives a new dimension to how we look to architecture. And those who have been to Drusty, this staircase of mine is my favorite. And I love to share with everybody because Watch it closely. It is nothing but our smart form. The reed, the structural engineer, the fabricator, even my staff always argued with me that how on earth it is going to rest. But being maverick, we have to find out our own solution. We have to find out our own guts. And that is our guts which brings the results. Spinal cord is also nature, like those trees and shades. So, working and sketching from the x-rays of spinal cord, we worked out the leaves and uh, spokes, which acts as a structural manner. Many more such things from nature. We see flowers around, we see branches around, but nature allows us to understand how things are made. Once we understand this, even the highest, the tallest building in the world, Burj Khalifa, Burj Khalifa in Dubai, is in nothing but a very similar such flowers which grows in the deserts of Aminas. SOM, Skit and Boeing, the architects for Burj Khalifa, virtually took such kind of a flower and designed it. And they succeeded. Because the natural phenomenon, the natural funda, its principles of design, helps us to make a stable building. So we have been working, trying to learn with our students how the same flowers can be transformed into a building design. See the beauty of it. I wish every nook and corner we can do something. But to make such kind of a building, we need to have two things. First, our own conviction. Number two, our courage.
courage and number three how we can convince the people who are going to pay for it. I am working since long to work out something, some matter of ideas. Whenever I am free, I am trying to sketch out something. I really wish to design a building derived from the skull of human body. I am sure it should be interesting. It might be, say, an incense building, but I really want to do it. So I again and again try to look at it and try to evaluate how we can say it. Like recently, Hattrick Wick and a uh, Swedish architect both are clubbed together to design Google headquarters in Mountain View, California. It is labeled by New York Times as a Google's insane new building. I wrote underneath on New York Times. To me, it's human. It's not incense. <coughs> Many a times we derive our work or designs from artwork. One of the, my favorite artists, art, who lives in France, is Indian born, Sayed Ali This is his beautiful work of Bindu, full of spirit, divinity. The colors, the lights. I did try to work upon this kind of a principles into my plans and some inspiration. But it is amazing. It inspires me. It inspires how do we go about deriving some kind of a good architecture. Today, Mr. Raza's paintings are one of the costliest paintings in the world market. So interesting. Why can't we ban the spoons and make it our garden? I allow this slide, especially if you put in here or is what we are as a student around. There are so many things around us. Why can't we experiment upon it for our own? Teachers are not around. There are so many things which comes to us. Let's start thinking how do we use it. In fact, we have find out so many different ways to use food as an element, as an ornament other than using it to feed ourselves. <coughs> One of the exercises in the folders of A School of Architecture is nothing but the folding components. I'm glad EIR is also working upon this under Bhagavad Gita and Maulay. We started this from a PIA since last 15 years with my students. And as and when I get mature enough to understand that, I start loving Frank Gehry's way of working. He starts with a paper and a catchy, a scissor, cuts it, cut, 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 and builds something. His mind is active in terms of climate, culture, context, everything. So this paper folding exercise teaches us a lot to bring about something very significant into our living. But we think we have a lot of things, a lot of questions in our mind. There's so many things going around. This world of digi the digital world is so vague and so wide. There's so many things, colors, happenings, events, science, art, craft, you name it. In this chaotic situation, 
we have to remember to stand alone. We have to allow ourselves not to get lost into this. We have to build our own world. I never knew while I'm involved with my work, it makes me more beautiful. Like they said, a woman looks beautiful when she's pregnant. So, it is you, my dear friend, Jay, and who was the gentleman who took this picture for me? Who is it? Is that you to me? Hey, Jay. Thank you, Jay. I think nobody else has ever taken such a beautiful moment of my life. And I thanks. Thank uh, Jay and Pierre for this. It's so beautiful. In fact, this is inspiring to me. I started learning from this kind of pictures. Or maybe the person who is taking photograph is so sensitive enough to capture the moments. Each expression, like you see in Roy, or in Ananda Jagadri, every moment is important. Now we wonder why this life? Travel, academics, the chaos of digital world. But before we start looking at some of my own creations, my own project, learning comes from many places. She is not my wife. I was flirting with her. <laughs> but that's also a part. <laughs> to keep you alive, to keep yourself alive, to keep your spirit going. The dialogue in Rang Kasiya Mui which is important for Varudra, Lakshmi Las Palace, Sayaji Rao Gai Kwan Tree, and Raja Ravi Verma. The dialogue of the climax goes like this. The woman who used to be the model for Raja Ravi Verma, because she allowed her, one of her body part, one of her breasts to expose, and somebody printed it. The whole scene went to the court. And eventually she died. She suicided because she was offended like anything. But when she stood in front of the honorable judge and the opponent lawyer, she said one line statement into inverted comma. This is a creature. This is an artist. Ravi made me a goddess and the world made me prostitute and she left the courthouse. It's how you look into it. It's how we see things around it. Everything in the world is involved. Mauli put a small line into it he is an activist. Yes, as far as India is concerned, there are few things we need to address. <clears throat> this was for the cleanliness agenda and the traffic regulations of our nations. I have been writing, addressing people from chief ministers to prime ministers. The first and the foremost visual impact of a nation is how we behave on our roads, how we park our car, how we drive. And the second is, how do we keep ourselves clean, our streets clean, our nation clean? So this was an address to around 40,000 people of Anand for Mission Clean Anand. To me, it's architecture. Or maybe I'm alone somewhere 
on the Atlantic Sea of Greece. It's nothing but a search. Let us find out what we have been doing, what can be the next, where we went wrong. We should have that ability of creating, recreating, recreating again and again, like the universe is life after that, after life, that life. It goes on. It's the universe. Using different materials to a delicate grace to a monumental concrete work. A combination of two components which changes the atmosphere around that part of the world. One of the recent projects, one of the recent work we did is here we are trying to focus on the volume, the main volume of the building, which is inclined to around 30 degrees masonry work. What you see this is a trapezoidal form, which is inclined to around 30 degrees into brickwork with such an interesting pattern of light fenestration. So we do one part of this, then again try to jump on the relative mass with it. So how it's going to complement each other. And things start building up. The mass starts growing. How do we place our windows? Now here what was important is the diagonal wall was given a what you say that like it's allowed to go inside the house from that linear window from top to bottom, two floor windows. We never wanted to stop it there, let it grow, let it flow. <coughs> and to that big mass, while you have something a small mass like this, we try to remove <coughs> that corner part and make it a corner window. So that the space from this point onwards is a one space which flows to the rear garden. Making the whole campus unified together and creating a very unusual but welcoming space. The mass which I am talking about is taken more than required to hide the services, the solar systems. And of course the wind, this all window of mind crosses from this point onwards and takes the air onto the center of This is how we see it from the road. It's a block of two identical building placed mirror for two frames. And this is how the entrance is created. Somewhere, somehow, we have to be flexible with our clients. We have to catch their ideas, their views. And with the digital world now, even a school child or a housewife who are not aware of architecture, who don't have that another sense of architecture, although I believe architecture is for all. Anybody can design. We are just learning skills and get a graduation degree in architecture. But designing is for anybody. Anybody can design. So, whatever the fancy of our clients are, we try to assimilate into our own design and try to bring out a harmony with our own architecture. Like what you see is, here is the entrance. They suddenly had an idea that such a monumental scale building is one of the largest residential buildings in the city of Harlem. 
So he wanted an anti effect like a sitare. And we sat there working upon it, working drawing after working drawing, how we can bring this mass with the part with this into a complete harmony. Because the moment a fraction of our element breaks, we lose the essence of our own physical world. Each space is important. Brick and concrete is one, but we need to learn, we need to understand, we need to bring out the natural <coughs> for the years, merge with each other. We cannot keep these two in isolation. So whatever we design, whatever we create, all this, the foliage, to be here, this foliage is architecture, not this. It seems maybe I designed this space for this beautiful plants to grow, and then something was added inside. It was not the other way. When I started designing the entrance axis, the main entries, of Drusty, <coughs> my first point was that I should put a champa here and I created a pocket here. Another is the mural place. This is a mural. If sensitively, if you see it here, and those yeah, have been frequenting to my place, this is a sculpture. It's a message derived from the Vedas and the Upanishads. It's about Brahma, Vishnu, Mahesh, the creator, the sustainer, and the killer. So, Om Namo Shiva is portrayed here in the form of an installation from a bird. So, this two part of the small courtyard is my world, and this is nothing but brick and sin. That's a sculpture. We bought a pot from the market. Again, like that earlier picture we were seeing, it started from the bottom or from the top. Here, this is a fine piece of exposed brickwork. Check it out, a small piece of this pot is around. How did we do it? The pot was thrown down on a, a sheet of uh, cloth. Each piece, the way the photograph was taken on the floor, it's the construction. Like what Mahesh does, he kills. Now killing here in an architect studio is killing your own preconceived ideas. Whatever you have been hacking around from the world, from the people. You have to constantly remember to kill those ideas and start rebuilding like this. That's what Brahma is. Brahma is a lot of creation. Create. So we kill that part, started again rebuilding it, brick by brick, inch by inch. It was very difficult to put it the way with force because a mason start doing it from here to there. Then you remember to put this piece. Then second layer you put this piece. Then the third layer some part up down. So that's how it went on, and it was a fantastic exercise with my students and fortunately with one of my teacher also. When somebody who's senior to me, somebody who who has taught you volunteers to work with you in our own work, I think we are blessed. And that's one of the blessings from one of my teachers. Whether it is nature, plants, building, or furniture design, an identity is always created. Taking out of the box something which has to be thought of, okay, how does this stand? How does this piece of nature stand? 
it is not even standing on a right angle. Now, believe me, being maverick is not doing acute angles, disowing right angles, and following curves. No, it's not that. It can be anything. The bindu, the kendra bindu, ultimately the point is you bring out a form which appeals to you. You, it becomes timeless. You feel like seeing it again and again. So these are three pieces of furniture we have been experimenting. Or maybe some metal structures like this. It is cantilevering on this part, but a simple geometry has been interval. And it became a very romantic outing interior. Or maybe when you really want to put something like our spectators, how do you bring out a sudden impact, a sudden attention of the passers by or the customers? So this is how the spectacles are being given such a prime importance. Or maybe like this graduation cap, which is now made into a concrete. This is a new entrance to the famous Sardar Patel University, Vallabhidyana. When the vice chancellor commissioned us to design the new vista to the entrance of Sardar Hotel University. We did a lot of homework, a lot of sketches, a lot of models. And we started working on that. Because what I always remember and what fascinates me is, whatever class is, whatever faculty is, graduation is graduation. And hence, all over the world, what we see is, once the graduation is offered, we throw a graduation cap in the air and we are so cheering up, enjoying us. Now, I thought when I am doing an entrance to the university, I think this is the most important thing we should take up. And we hang it from the top beams. It's full of concrete and it looks good. And people enjoy it. It gave a new identity to Sardar Patel. My work starts from a piece of paper, not a piece of paper, rather a sketchbook, a fine sketchbook. A ink pen or a 6B pencil, nothing less than that. That 6B pencil, that ink on a fine sheet of cartridge paper allows our own self to float onto it. It's like surfing. When we are in the ocean on a surfboard, we allow ourselves free to move around. Surfing will not have brain. Similarly, an architect's thinking never have a brain. We have to flow, keep on flowing with our own tarang, our own vibes, our own ideas going on. And this piece of paper, multiple lines, allows us to understand the geometry, the relations of different forms, the actual behavior, the open space, the landscaping. It is. But the moment we break ourselves, Many a times I wonder how on earth somebody can uh, sketch with a ball pen or a stagler or a micro tip or what you can say that uh, five point pencil. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, sort of what I can say. It shocks me. It kills our feel of fluidity. It is a disconnecting between our heart and the paper.
whatever we draw is nothing but the trinity of our mind, body and heart. No architecture comes out of anywhere. It's the connection, connection of the paper, the sketch, the ideas and the medium we use. I know I am sketching like this and once this is over, I am on holidays, Chetna and a lot of other people start working. So that's the beauty of it. Or maybe sometimes producing a lot of models. In fact, architecture, studio, working in the office takes me almost every day back to my childhood. Many people ask me, how do you keep yourself so young? I am 52. But maybe this kind of attitude allows us to remain in that state of mind and our own physical existence. Because it is said, childhood is the most important part. It's an emotion part of our life. We do beautiful things. So architecture needs it. And we try on doing a lot of model, break it, do it again. and enjoy. Can you help? Yes. Like this. Suddenly when a food company, a big food company of Gujarat wanted us to brand their food chain of shops. We do a lot of shops for them. It's like branding their chain. Now food is hygiene. Cleanliness. Being maverick, I thought of a reverse thing. I started using a rusted plates, a junkyard thing. It was like an expression, branding the product that even though it's a food item, it needs hygiene. We are the people, we are the company who handles things in its own all kind of purity, even though you have these rusted things. So I wanted to project my client in a very, very larger role. And now successfully on the same pattern, we have been doing for them a prototype shop, many shops, around six, seven shops are already there. We wanted to contract it to things. And the environment it brought in, because the lights is placed above the ceiling. Junk sheets are used as a ceiling under the gypsum ceiling. In between is the lights, a very thoughtfully placed lights. In fact, we keep on experimenting from shop to shop to bring down the energy and to bring out a aura of well, what you can say, the wash of a fresh light and a shadow like this. And in the end, so many beautiful spaces around. experimenting like this with a glass box here. This is that arch I was talking about. First the column was created, the arch, and then the brickwork was considered. This is the most important part. This bond of brick and this, how do we club it? It was a challenge. And we all worked upon it successfully. The first instant is ordinary, but that ordinary thing has to be put on on paper and see the relationships. The conviction what we have, let it be fluid, let it be childlike, let it be natural and it brings out a beautiful change around. 
or maybe this connection between a semi open space and the outdoors. Architecture itself becomes a window to the nature around. It's a frame from which you see the rest of the area. So the frame is important. Like here, this frame is important. And it transcends from this as a part of a landscape sculpture. Or maybe it is such a dynamic, forceful curve emerging out of this building. It is an experimenting from one of our previous buildings. Sometimes we love to redo our own building in a different way. That was the last slide was that. Or maybe we propose something like this to the Council of Anand to have public buildings like this. One of the most ambitious project. The whole documentary of this project is on YouTube, Loteshwar Waterfront. These are some of the images of it. It's not only architecture, it's a social economic programming like what you see in Bilbao. To bring to this nation, to this town, a new identity. It's a whole proposal of a one scheme. That's a master plan of British Royal Waterfront. That's a beautiful lake, reshaped like a heart because Anand means joy, city of joy. We were projecting this city as a city of joy. Two heritage properties and Hall of Fame five, five Hall of Fame and the festival arena. And this is where the sky tower is. Unfortunately, like John Rutgen, the project is under construction, but I am not the architect. Or maybe it's all the way to Rajasthan, changing of Mount Abu, the only hill station between Gujarat and Rajasthan. Two of the largest hill station, two of the largest state, single hill station. And we were working for great public spaces. We designed Abu in 0.5 meters walking distance. You can see the slide itself is self-explanatory. Each zone has a lake, then the promenade, then the commercial. These are the plazas, these are the walkways, and at the core, outside core, is the residential blocks. So on this prototype of 10 minutes walking, each circle is 10 minutes walking. We were trying to make our Mount Abu a walkable station. This is a map of Mount Abu. These are the zones we plotted. And that concept of 10 minutes walking is brought down to each zone here. And all of them are connected with the electric tramway. We need to maintain the habitat around that, the microclimate over there. It's such a beautiful, in fact, it's the largest part of Arauli Hills between Maharashtra to all the way to Rajasthan and beyond. So there are a lot of natural habitats, a lot of animals, and we maintain it. <coughs> We went up to the extent of draining it also, how do we drain the water, how do we maintain the contours. This was the urban state project we were working upon in how do we do this, when it's a roof. So from here to here, it goes like this. So from the core to the residential place. Or maybe we want 
to see Abu like this. It's a Photoshop image of our own visual effect. How does Abu look once it is done? Or maybe those who have been to Vallabh Vidyanagar, it's a mini Oxford University. One of the best or the biggest of the thing as a human being, as a creator, as an architect. Possibly if we achieve is stopping Vallabh Vidyanagar to look like this because it is like this at the moment. Politicians, ignorance of the people, wanted to cut 750 mature trees like this and they wanted to make it like this in on the name of development, traffic behaviors and accidents. We prepared a master plan and convinced the government officials not to cut those trees. And due to that master plan today, this 750 trees, some of which are almost 70 to 80 years old, are still there. And this beautiful campus looks like this. Because we tag it like this, small Vidyanagar, beautiful Vidyanagar. Otherwise, it would have been a highway. Or to quickly run through it, to propose the then Chief Minister of Gujarat, Mr. Narendra Modi, on his request. This is a project given to us by Mr. Narendra Modi. How do we change? How do we dignify our police? Today, Indian police looks like this. This nation do not respect that policeman. We have a slang word called Thola Peda. But we do not regard them as an officer. So it was a six month intensive research at our office and we tried to give a new... The khaki dress, what we see in India for the police is nothing but a mistake. And in 1890, a British uh, inspector or a major was tied at those in those era pre independence there was white uniform for the police. He was tired of it because of the dust, it gets dirty. So what they did is they first of all they put it on the mud. So the color you got is that brownish stone. They started making a dye. It's an interesting story. They're making a dye, and that dye is known as khaki. In the Oxford Dictionary of English Language Dictionary, khaki is a word evolved from this action of a policeman changing color white to khaki because khak is, we say it in India, in uh, Hindi, khak We say that khak is this. It's one element of those five elements of nature. Every human being is ultimately going to khaki, and that's how khaki came. We designed the dress, the uniform for Gujarat State Police, which unfortunately he cannot pass through the legislation of Gujarat Legislative Assembly. But it was environmentally designed, his cap, like the Nike, this thing, so comfortable that even in 48 degrees standing on the streets of India, they do not get hit at all. Good shoes. Our skin is black. These people who enter the police are under nourish. Their skin tone was important. And we, we wanted to give them a good look. We want all our policemen to look handsome. And that was due to the now Prime Minister of India we did this, I wish this change comes out to this nation one fine day. Next. <laughs> or maybe one beautiful thing, let us quickly go through it before I end my presentation. In 2013, till 2013, this was a rule. 
in Karamsar where the first Deputy Prime Minister of India, Sardar Vallabhai Patel, study. So this is a heritage property, 125 years. Next. So we were asked to design for it. Next slide. We try to maintain each brick into its original form. Added a wooden girder behind it and above it is a fabric roof. So that the load of RCC or the metal do not crush it down, there is any way deteriorating the part. This was given to the Chief Minister, the now Chief Minister of Gujarat, but unfortunately, being maverick, this was thrown away and some rational stereotype building today exists. Or maybe to end with today's presentation, which I hope you enjoyed, I would like to conclude my presentation. This journey of being around with so many beautiful people like you, students, faculties, traveling around the globe, being and living with the nature. It's so beautiful when we start working upon it and this is yet to be done for the richest family of India. We will be soon designing for the Ambani's any of this project. Next. These are the three alternatives we have been negotiating with our side to do it in the, their homeland where Mr. Dhirubhai Ambani was his native place. It's a huge building, a community center. So this is how. A same side, same block of building, which my office on a three different table, we have working that how the same thing can be given more space in a small side. So this is one next. This and third. So building by building, we started checking ourselves how the space looks like. And yet in our first meeting, this alternative, although it's a typical Indian Ravesi, the, the corridor kind of architecture with a C-shaped courtyard open to top in the center. They are probably not fit for this, but the previous, any of the previous two. Next. But at the end, what is important is we remain happy, we spread happiness around, we love ourselves, our work, and when we love ourselves, it is a result and nothing but the truth within. Anything done with a complete freedom of thought, complete truth within allows you to spread love. And this world needs love. What is more important than we go to sleep with satisfaction and wake up with determination next day morning? Creating such kind of a beautiful space, a holistic space, we love to keep on working, proud to be an architect. Maybe this is our new office building, we are trying to experiment, clubbing it with the complete greenery around. And one part of this beautiful square has been squeezed out, it's still tear out to make it more prominent and impactful to the existing architecture. Or maybe while we walk around such kind of a natural habitat, it evokes our emotions, our sensitivity. Because the first thing what is important is being human. Once we become human, being maverick is easy. 
divinity, truth, and love allows us to build beautiful buildings around wherever we go and whatever we do. Thank you. I hope you have enjoyed it as I enjoyed speaking to you, sharing my experience of what the journey was to this. And such kind of a presentation allows us to reveal ourselves. It's like the broken tissues, the cells. So I thank you that I was allowed to give a presentation which has helped me to reactivate, to recharge myself. And wherein, when I go back home to my studio, I try to do something better than what I have done yesterday. Thank you.
and I wish you all the best. You are young, handsome. <laughs> uh, what can I say? I hope you have all enjoyed, right? And especially about this foreign uh, guests. They must have got the real sense of some culture from what he saw from the slides, you see? And that is how we are. Okay. Thank you so much for coming here and giving your valuable time. Rang Rasi <laughs>